we are as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret society, opposed to secret oaths, opposed to secret proceedings, secret for secret proceedings. No official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, could interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to, to, deserve to know. To know. And deserve to know. Welcome to Conspiracy Corner Podcast, everyone. Sorry, the computer's being a little slow. Um, I'm not uh, really going to have too long of an update today because I had enough energy that I could put out two podcasts today because I did a drive cast, which is currently uploading, and then this one will be uploaded right after it because it doesn't take me too long to edit videos and stuff. Um, it's 8.05 a.m. Today is January 23rd, 2021. Um, yeah, I don't really have too much of an update. I do have some questions for the listener, though. Um, by the way, there is someone out there, I'm guessing they're still listening because my sub count hasn't dropped or lowered knock on wood as far as lowering i mean i'm always willing for it to to raise in subs so please make sure to like subscribe and and share um even if you're not actually digitally sharing if you know you know anyone who is into conspiracies or paranormal cryptozoology um the macabre anything like that uh share with them you know but I do have a couple things I wanted to say about the channel. Um, YouTube will be cracking down even harder now that Biden is in office. I just want you guys to know. And the crazy thing is, is they're even hitting on the left. Like Antifa is getting yanked off of uh, Twitter and stuff. So... I hate to say I told you so, Antifa, but I told you so. Uh, if they're coming for us, they'll come for you next. And that's what they're doing. So extreme left, extreme right. And even if like you're like me and stuck in the middle who, you know, I voted Trump, but I'm very liberal, actually. I mean, I'm pro-abortion. I'm, I'm uh, you know, freedom of religion, separation of church and state you know, uh, pro gay marriage. I actually am super liberal. Uh, most people don't realize that, you know, they, they assume that <laughs> I have been called literally Antifa and a Q-tard Trump supporter literally within the same week before. So yeah, they're taking down every, everyone, which is, Hey, I mean, it is what it is. So, uh, Please support us on other platforms like BitChute, Google Podcast, uh, Breaker, Spotify, Anchor. Um, but yeah, uh, I wanted to say something. Uh, someone out there is listening, I should hope. I will get back to the, the Alalu episodes. Um, I do have one more episode planned after this, and I will, I promise you, I will actually... Give me just one second. Oh, I already got it set up. Good. I already got it set up to where after the next episode, we will get back to the Book of Enki and get back into the Alalu story. Um, that was honestly a two, two different people. Um, one of them was Dot Orbix, who does my music. 
he was he actually said in a comment hey I want to hear more book of Enki stuff and then another person said hey I want to hear more book of Enki stuff so like two two requests on more book of Enki episodes so I will be doing a third part in that series on book of Enki um, not next episode but the episode after that because I gotta I also have people who are commenting hey I like the Native American stuff or, hey, I love that your channel, every episode is different. And that's what I try to do for you guys is, like, I might talk, you know, Native American mythology one episode. And then the next episode's ghost stories. And then the next episode's alien stuff. And then the next episode is getting into the macabre, like torture devices, you know. And people like that. And I, I like that personally. I don't want this channel to, to be too much of one thing. So, um, um, yeah, just the past couple episodes I've had to touch on current events. I, I could, I could not ignore it, but, um, I'm feeling pretty good today. Today we are doing a torture device episode because that's been an ongoing series and, um, I'm not finished with it yet. And like I said, I try to touch on different subjects, so... That is what we are doing today. It is on Branks and Gags is the torture device that we are covering today. Um, next episode, we'll get into uh, a little bit of modern alien stuff. A little bit of, not really so much alien stuff. Kind of like Men in Black stuff. Uh, that is another request I had. Somebody requested a while back, and I have not forgotten I do listen to you guys' comments, and I do listen to you guys' requests, but they wanted me to cover specifically Men in Black. So I will be covering next episode is kind of like Men in Black, but also just strange encounters with weird people like who do not seem like they're of this world. So that will be next episode, and then after that we'll get back into Alalu, his little adventure that he's been going on some ancient astronaut theory stuff and then from then on I don't know I mean I got a, a bunch planned but I, I kind of play it by ear on how I'm feeling on what I want to talk about but uh let's get on with the show all right false alarm I'm so sorry back to the update not an update but uh me I it slipped my mind completely I apologize um my question was I have had multiple kind of mini-series going on with the podcast, which some of you may have noticed, some of you may not have noticed. Um, the current mini-series we got going on right now is the Torture Devices, which um, people are kind of like, eh, they don't seem to really like that too much, which is fine, we're almost done with it. Um... I actually, personally, I'm not going to lie, I like serial killer stuff, murderabilia, uh, torture devices, I I'm a little macabre like that. I, I collect horror films and stuff. Uh, I listen to like podcasts like Serial Killing, which is an awesome podcast, so shout out to them. Um, but yeah, so I kind of do that as a, I ain't going to lie, a kind of selfishness. I, I enjoy that type of stuff. Um, what was I going to, oh yeah, I, I also have a Native American mini-series that was going, that's going on. I think it's about ready to come to a close. I don't really have too much else on it. Um, I had a kind of John A. Keel mini-series going on. Um, yeah, I, 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 I have like several little kind of mini-series going on. I will one day sit down and um, put them in playlist so you can hear the whole series one after the other. You don't have to keep looking up older episodes when I reference them um, to make it a little easier on you guys. Um, and also, with the, it's hard to touch one subject without touching another subject. Now, with the torture device episode, it had mentioned a particular character in history, a real person, Giles Corey, who had died by um, basically being crushed by rocks during the Salem witch trials. 
Now, I wanted to do an episode on the Salem Witch Trials, but I also, I would like to, I had thought about it, like, honestly, I was going to do research and find just that particular scene of Gory, Gory, uh, Corey Giles dying, but I was like, dude, The Crucible is like a play. It's not that long. I mean, it looks longer than it actually is. You can read it within like a day or two. So I wanted to perhaps do like kind of like a mini series on reading The Crucible because it is based off of a true story. Um, I thought that would be cool because it, it, to me it would be more exciting hearing it in a play form hearing the story rather than like me droning on and on like some boring historian because you can actually hear the characters talking back and forth and if I can get my wife in on it if we have a day off together she could play the female parts I could play the male parts and that's something I've been wanting to cover is the Salem witch trials um, and so let me know in the comments if that's something you guys are interested in and also um, the book of, uh, not the book of Enki, but, uh, Epic of Gilgamesh. That is literally a, it's a poem, but it's fragments of a cuneiform tablet. So it's really not that long. I literally read it within like five hours. So I thought that would be another cool kind of ongoing series that you guys, I could cover literally the entire book, like. And it wouldn't be like an audiobook. It would still be like a podcast. Like, obviously, I would comment here and there and say whatever I wanted to or go on a little rant or whatever. But uh, we could do that as a series, too. So let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm just throwing stuff out there. I try to please the audience, what, what small audience I have. But, um, yeah, we'll get on with the show. Sorry for the false alarm. All right. Franks and Gags, and this uh, source material is from Alice Morse Earl. It's an old pamphlet, originally printed in, I got this thing for like 50 cents too, it was a, it was a steal, but it's an old, old pamphlet, originally printed in 1896 of different Torture Devices. It's titled uh, Curious Punishments of Bygone Days. So, Branks and Gags. The Brank or Scold Bridle was unknown in America in its English shape, though from colonial records we learn that scolding women were far too plentiful and were gagged for that annoying and irritating habit. The Brank sometimes called the Gossip's Bridle or dame's bridle, or scold's helm, was truly a bridle for a cursed queen. It was a shocking instrument, a sort of iron cage, often of great weight, when worn covering the entire head with a spiked plate or flat tongue of iron to be placed in the mouth over the tongue. Hence, if the offender spoke, she was cruelly hurt. Ralph Gardner in his book entitled England's Grievance Discovered in Relation to the Coal Trade, etc., printed in 1665, says of Newcastle on Tyne, there he saw one of Anne's, Anne Bridlestone, drove through the streets by an officer of the same corporation, holding a rope in his hand, the other end fastened to an engine called the Branks, which is like a crown it being of iron, which he muzzled over the head and face, with a great gag or tongue or iron forced into her mouth, which forced the blood out. And that is the punishment which the magistrates do inflict upon chiding or scalding women, and he hath often seen the like done to others. Kind of makes me go, uh... Modern feminists, like, what are you complaining about? <laughs> Sorry, but I can't help but sometimes look back in history and go, uh, you guys got it made. Like, and I'm pretty sure, like, the new devil, the new bad guy is, like, any white guy right now. <laughs> Just saying. 
Over 50 branks of various shapes are now in existence in English museums, churches, town halls, etc. Improved by their number and wide extent of location, the prevalence of their employment as a means of punishment, being made of durable iron and kept within doors and often thrust as their use grew infrequent into out-of-the-way hiding places. They have not vanished from existence, as have the wooden stocks and pillories, which stood exposed to wear, weather, and attack. One of these old-time branks is in the vestry of the church at Walton-on-Thames. It is dated 1632 and has the couplet gra uh, graven on it. Chester presents Walton with a bride to cure women's tongues that talk too idle. By tradition, this brank was angrily and insultingly given by a gentleman named Chester, who had, <coughs> who had, through the lie of a gossiping woman of Walton, lost an expected fortune. One is the call, uh, Congleton Town Hall, which was used as recently as 1824, upon a confirmed scold who had especially abused some constables and church wardens. And as late as 1858, a brank was produced in terrorim to silence an old English scold. And it is said with marked and salutary effect. Several branks are still in existence in Staffordshire, the old historian of the country, Dr. Plot, pleads quaintly the cause of the brank. We come to the arts that respect mankind, amongst which, as elsewhere, the civility of precedence must be allowed to the women, and that as well in punishments as in favors, for the former, whereof they have such a peculiar artifice at Newcastle and Walsall, for correcting of skulls, which it does too, so effectually, and so very safely, that I look upon it as much to be preferred to the ducking stool, which not only endangers the health of the party, but also gives her tongue liberty to wag, twixt every dip, to neither of which is this all liable. It being such a bridle for the tongue as not only quite deprives them of speech, but brings shame for their transgression and humility thereupon before it's taken off. Which being put upon the offender by the order of the magistrate and fastened with a padlock behind, she is led through the town by an officer to her shame, nor is it taken off, till after the party begins to show all external signs of imaginable of humili uh, humiliation and amendment, quote, unquote. Mr. Lywin Jewett, editor of the Reliquary, gives an explicit account of the way a brank was worn. The Chesterfield brank is as good as, good as an example and has the uh, additional interest of bearing a date. It is nine inches in height and six and three quarters across the hoop. It consists of a hoop of iron hinged on either side and fastened behind in a band also of iron, passing over the head from the back to the front, opening dividing in front to admit the nose of the woman's whose misfortune it was to wear it. So basically, uh, for anyone who like grew up like me, like a 90s kid and grew up on wrestling, Pretty much it looks like the Mankind mask. I don't know if that was intentional with Mankind. I'm, I'm pretty sure it probably was. Because I could totally see him into like weird... Like, uh... Torture devices and interests like that, you know? I love Mankind, dude. He was originally Cactus Jack. Uh, like back in like the 80s, I think. Or early 90s, but... Yeah, Mankind was cool as fuck, man. I love him to death. He reminds me of my, my uncle, uh, Kevin, who passed away. Um, but yeah, it looks like that, kind of. I mean, look at the title page. It'll it'll show. That and I plan on 
putting in an image of it of the actual device. So the prank would be opened back uh, or opened by throwing back the sides of the hoop and hinder the part of the top band by means of hinges. The constable would then stand up would then stand in front of his victim and force the knife or plate into her mouth. So basically when you start talking it'll start cutting your tongue. The divided band passing on either side of her nose which would protrude enough which would protrude through the opening. The hoop would then be closed behind. The, ba the bra band brought down from the top to the back of the head and fastened down upon it and thus the cage would at once be firmly and immovably fixed so long as her tormentors might think fit. On the left side is a chain one end of which is attached to the hoop and on the other end is a ring by which the victim was led or by which she was at pleasure attached to a post or wall. On the front of the brank is the date 1688. This brank is depicted in the reliquary from October 1860. Mr. William Andrews, in his interesting book entitled Old Time Punishments, gives drawings of no less than 16 branks now preserved in England. Some of them are massive and horrible instruments of torture. It will be noted that the brank is unusually uh, universally pardon, spoken of as a punishment for women, but men also were sentenced to wear it. Paupers, blasphemers, railers, I'm not sure what a railer is. I am glad John Winthrop and John Carver did not uh, bring cumbrous and cruel iron branks to America. There are plenty of other ways to shut a woman's mouth and to still her tongue. As all sensible men know, on every hand, if gossips were found, a simple machine could be shaped, one far simpler than a scold's bridle. A cleft stick pinched on the tongue was as temporary effectious as the iron machine, and could be speedily put in use. Damn, they just love abusing women back then, didn't they? On June 4th, 1651, the little town of St. Uh, Southampton, Long Island, uh, saw a well-known resident for her exorbitant, exorbitant words of imprecation. I can read, by the way. <laughs> Stand for an hour in public with her tongue in a in a cleft stick. A neighbor at East Hampton, Long Island, the same year received a like sentence. It is ordered that Goody, Goody Edwards shall pay three pound or have her tongue and a cleft stick for contempt of court warrant, warrant in Siange, she would not come. But if she had been governor or magistrate, then she would come and desiring the warrant to burn it. About the same time, good wife Hunter was gagged in Springfield for a similar offense. In Salem, under the sway of the rigid and narrow Puritan Endicott. This is why I want to do, honestly, a Salem witch trial series. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys want to hear that. The system of petty surveillance and demeaning punishment seemed to reach its height, and one citizen, in mild sarcasm thereof, said he did suppose, if he did lie abed in the morning, he would be hauled up by the magistrates and would promptly and was promptly fined for even saying such a thing in jest. Thereof, of course, one Oliver, his wife, was a judge to be whipped for reproaching the magistrates and for prophesying. Winthrop, in his History of New England, says of her scourging and her further punishment, quote, She stood without tying and bear her punishment with a masculine spirit, glorying in her suffering. But after, when she came to consider the reproach which would stick by her, etc., she was much dejected about it. She had a cleft stick put on her tongue half an hour for reproaching the elders. In Salem, once again, 
In 1639, four men got drunk, young men, some of them servants. Two named George Dill and John Cook were thus punished. They were fined forties for drunkenness, and to stand at the meeting house door next lecture day with a class stick upon his tongue and a paper upon his hat subscribed for gross premeditated language. The others, Thomas Tuck and Micah Iver, were not so drunk nor such wanton liars, and their punishment was somewhat mitigated. The sentence runs thus. They also found guilty of lying in drunkenness, though not to that degree as the twa farmer yet are fined forties, and their own promise taken for it. Also to stand on the lecture day with the two former but not cleft stick on their tongue, only a paper on his head and scri uh, subscribed for lying. So it will be seen that men suffer this painful and mortifying punishment as well as women. And I may say, in passing, that slander and mischief-making seem to be even more rife among men than among women in colonial times. This entry may be found in the records of Massachusetts Bay Colony. 6 September, Boston, 1636. Robert Shorthouse, for swearing by the blood of God, was sentenced to have his tongue put into a cleft stick, and so stand for half an hour, and Elizabeth, wife of Thomas Applegate, was censored to stand with her tongue in a cleft stick for half an hour for swearage, railinge, and re revelinge. These are their words, by the way. I guess that's how they used to talk back then. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Bartlett, Bartlett, in the same court in 1638, was pres presented, presented, that's what it says, for cursing and swearing, and had his tongue thrust in a cleft stick. Samuel Hawks, for cursing, lying, and stealing, received the same sentence. In 1671, Sarah Morgan struck her husband. He evidently ran whining to the constables and wife Sarah received a just punishment. She was ordered to stand with a gag in her mouth at Kitterly, Maine, at a public town meeting, and the cause of her offense written and put on her forehead. Thus gagged and placarded, she must have proved a striking figure, jeered at, doubtless, as an arduous example of wifely insubordination. By all the good citizens who came to shape the town's mind at the town's meeting, as years passed on, the independent spirit of the times became averse to gagging. Though whipping and imprisonment still were for some years dealt out for reviling and railing, America was in some ways earlier in humane elements of consideration for criminals than England. And while women were still wearing the brank in, in, brank in English village, villages, American women no longer feared the ga either gag or cleft stick for unruly tongues. Long after the punishment of which I write had been banished from American courts, it lingered in various forms in American schools, as did the stocks, the penance stool, and the whip. I have an example of a whispering stick, quote unquote, a wooden gag provided with holes by which it could be tied in place and which was used in a Providence school during the century as a punishment for whispering. And many a child during the past century had a cleft stick placed on his tongue for ill words or untimely words in school, sometimes with an exaggeration of ridicule, a small branch of a tree in full leaf was split and pinched on the tongue, a truly pedagogical torture. But yeah, that's, I don't know, like, it kind of reminded me towards the end of that little section, um, whipping, whipping in schools. Um, I don't know, like, I'm pro- spanking your 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 child i believe that every parent has the right to spank your child i do not believe that you should be beating your child but 
I did always think it was kind of weird, like, listening to my dad talk about how he got spankings in school, and he was like, yeah, I wish they'd still do it, and it's like, looking at, honestly, the modern world and the old world, do you really want some, like, creep teacher, like, spanking your kid and getting off on it? Like, I don't know, it just seems so bizarre that teachers back in the day could, like, honestly torture children um seems odd but that's all i got for you today i put out two episodes so i think i did pretty good i took a little break um i was just honestly i was feeling depressed and uh it was uh i had reasons though and for anyone who who does have depression like this is like a little test that I do for myself is like I, I kind of make a shopping list like why am I sad you know is my wife unhappy with me no um, do I have am I lacking in money no is my car broke down no and I go through this list and I mark off all the things that I could think of what could be making me sad and if I have reason to be sad, like I have for the past couple days, I realize that it's not chemical imbalance. It's not depression because of that. It's because there's a reason I'm sad. And that's okay. And I understand that. Because of what's going on in the world right now. This craziness. 2021 is making me sad. I feel good now. Um, but... Yeah, I had to take a couple days off, man. And it wasn't depression because it wasn't chemical imbalance. I had every reason to be sad. It was rational sadness, but I didn't want to be on here all mopey and stuff. I feel good now. So there you go. You got two episodes out of me today. I hope you all enjoy. If I take little breaks, I always try to make it up to you all. And um, you all have a good day. We are as a people. and historically opposed to secret society opposed to secret oaths opposed to secret proceedings secret for secret proceedings no official of my administration whether his rank is high or low could interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news Stifle dissent. To cover up our mistakes. Or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know.